A new month, a new focus, manifestation. Manifestation simply means showing forth. And this is very evident in the book of Acts. Last two weeks, we have saw the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The book of Acts is simply a sequel of the book of Luke, which was written by a meticulous physician, Luke. So the book of Acts, in chapter 2, it says that those who believe in Jesus Christ, Jesus asked them to wait for the coming of the Holy Spirit. Let us see in Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 11. It says, When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues, as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devoted men from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confused, because Everyone heard them speaking in his own language. Then they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Look, are not all these who speak Galileans? And how is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born? Parthians, Medians, Elamites, those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontius, and Asia. Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya adjoining Cyrene. Visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them speaking in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. And thereafter, after the Holy Spirit has entered into the apostles, the apostles did mighty works. And that is that great manifestation when the Holy Spirit enters into those who are born of Jesus' baptism, death, and resurrection. Today, in the book of Matthew 8, verse 5 to 13, we can see Jesus heals a centurion servant. So we will discover three main points, what faith will manifest. So today, I've entitled my message as Just One Word. Without further delay, let us zoom into our main text, Matthew 8, verse 5 to 13. Now when Jesus has entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is laying at home paralyzed, dreadful tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word, and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me, and I say to this one, Go, and he goes, and to another, Come, and he comes, and to my servant, Do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, Assuredly I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. And I say to you that many will come from east and west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said to the centurion, Go your way, and as you have believed, so let it be done for you. And his servant was healed that same hour. So what is this great faith? That great faith that Jesus is talking about is through that utterance of that centurion. Just speak a word and my servant will be healed. That is that bold faith that he had. Faith simply means relying, believing, clinging unto Totally surrender everything. And what is this bold faith? What is this faith that moved the mountains? In Mark 
11 verse 23, it says, For assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, Be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. So here we know that faith simply means there is no doubt when you say anything and you believe anything by faith means that you believe without a doubt. Not 0.0001% of doubt is there. And in Ephesians 3 verse 12, it says that in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in Him. Only with that bold faith, we can boldly enter in the presence of God. That is why in Ephesians 3 verse 12, it says, we have that boldness and that confidence access in His presence. And in Ephesians 2 verse 8 to 9, it says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. So we are saved by faith, faith in the righteousness of God, Jesus' baptism, death, and resurrection. And it's only by faith and not by works. Because nothing we can do or not do to believe in Jesus' baptism, death, and resurrection. There's no works that is included in that equation itself. So by believing and having that bold faith, it is the gift of God that is given to us. And in Hebrews 12 verse 2, it says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus is the founder and the finisher of our faith. Actually, there is no part for us to play, but Jesus is the one accomplishing it all and we just ought to believe by faith that he has accomplished it from the beginning until the end. And in Hebrews 11 verse 6, it says, But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And in Romans 1 verse 16 and 17, it says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jews first and also for the Greeks. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Only with that bold faith and that great faith, there is no doubt, there is courage, and there is that overcoming life. And only in that bold faith, we can automatically produce good works, which is the evidence that you believe in Jesus' baptism, death, and resurrection. So from this passage, Matthew 8, verse 5 to 13, I've divided it into three points. So let us see in Matthew 8, verse 5 to 7, it says, Now when Jesus has entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is laying at home, paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. So my first point is faith produces humility. In this passage, we can see that a centurion, who is a Roman leader of an army of hundred soldiers, he humbled himself and acknowledged that only Jesus Christ at that moment can save his servant. At that dreadful, and as he has no choice but to acknowledge that Jesus Christ is the only one that can save his servant. And what made him went to look for Jesus is because he would have heard of what Jesus can do. He would have heard of how Jesus' ministry healing people and he believed. So many of times we may ask, does the believing come first or does humility come first? My answer is, faith 
and believing comes first. Do you know why faith comes first? It's because it's when he heard that Jesus can save, that is believing that Jesus is able to save his servant. It's only by believing then he came to his senses that acknowledging that only he, Jesus Christ, can save his servant. And then humble himself, even though he may be in charge of hundreds of soldiers, of Roman soldiers under him, but he humbled himself and to come to Jesus to ask for him to save his servant. So today, similarly, it's also by faith. Today, when we believe, when we have heard that what Christ has done, what Christ can do for us, is because only Jesus is the way out. And we acknowledge that I am a sinner that requires a Savior to save me. That is why we believe and then we humble ourselves to accept this gospel of God's righteousness, Jesus' baptism, death, and resurrection. Then only we can be from a sinner to a sinner's and a righteous child of God. And today, when we believe, humility is in us because Christ is in us. And Jesus answered, I will come and heal him. This was Immediate, Jesus answered him immediately. I will come and heal him. So we can see that Jesus is always willing, willing to come and save. But are we willing to believe in Jesus' baptism, death, and resurrection? What he has come to do. Jesus Christ came as a man at Jordan River, receiving all our sins. When John the Baptist passed all our sins upon the body of Jesus and he willingly walked that three years for us, suffered, willified and cursed for all of us today and after that three years, he died for every single one of us. And after three days, he rose again because he is the Son of God. And today, he is willing to save every single one of us. But are we willing to believe and have faith? Because only by faith, it will produce humility. Humility to receive the word of God. In 1 Peter 5 verse 5, it says, Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud, but give grace to the humble. So we have seen in my first point that faith produces humility. And humility itself will produce submission. Submission to the authorities, submission to the word of God, submission to God's church, submission to God's leader. And submission will produce accountability. So all of this starts from faith. We must have faith to believe in Jesus' baptism, death and resurrection then only we can have that humble heart. Only when we have that humble heart, we can submit. Only when we submit, we can be accountable to those who have the authority and the power to preach to one's soul. And do not worry about losing out when you're humble, when you're submissive, or when you're accountable to someone. Because God is the one that is uplifting you. Because it says those who humble, God is the one that lifts them up. And let us continue in Matthew 8 verse 8 to 9. It says, The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority having soldiers under me, and I see to this one go, and he goes, and to another come, and he comes, and to my servant do this, and he does it. 
So my second point is faith produce bonus. This bonus comes from faith in believing who Jesus is. Jesus has all the authority and power. Last week we saw, or last two weeks, we saw in Matthew 28 verse 18, it says, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. And in 1 Peter 3 verse 22, it says, Jesus, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers having been made subjected to him. This proves that Jesus has the authority and power. And in John 3 verse 35, it says, The Father loves the Son and has given all things, all things into his hands. So today, do you have that bonus of faith to speak forth as a prophet guiding the good news, this gospel of God's righteousness that has saved you? Do you have that bold faith to speak into your situation? And do you have that bold faith to speak up, to say who you are in Christ today? Not what the world tells who you are, but you tell the world and you tell Satan that who you are planted in Christ, rooted in Christ because of this great faith that you have in Jesus' baptism, death and resurrection? Or are you being like disciples in the boat, which is written in Matthew 8, verse 23 to 26? Now when he got into a boat, his disciples followed him, and suddenly a great tempest arose on the sea, so that the boat was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. Then his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we are perishing. But he said to them, Why are you fearful, O you of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. And in Mark 4, verse 40, it says, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? In Luke 8, verse 25a, it says, where is your faith? So today, you can either have that bold faith or you can either be like the disciples in the boat. When storms come, they woke Jesus up instead of having faith to speak forth into that storm. God has given you all authority and power because he has given it all upon Jesus and Jesus is indwelling in us, united with us, because we have believed in Jesus' baptism, death, and resurrection. Today, with Christ in us, we have that power and authority. And we can speak forth, we can speak into our situation. When every storm is coming our way, we can be like Jesus to calm the storm. Not being one that is fearful, which Jesus said, O you of little faith. Or in some it says, Why are you fearful? Where is your faith? Today is the same. When we believe in Jesus' baptism and death and resurrection, today when we are faced with so many challenges, where is our faith? Where is your bold faith? Only that faith can produce boldness to proclaim the gospel of God's righteousness in our lives to have that peace in us. So the second point, faith produce bonus. And that bonus is the one that helps us to proclaim and declare and speak forth into our situations, into our lives, so that we can experience the faith. Faith must produce good works so that faith can be evident in our lives. Matthew 8 verse 10 to 13 says, When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, Assuredly I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. And I say to you that many will come from east and west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into utter darkness. 
There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, Pay attention to this. Go your way, and as you have believed, so let it be done for you. And his servant was healed that same hour. My third point is, faith produces healing. This verse it says, As you have believed, so let it be done unto you. Faith indeed produces miracles. Some might say, I do not experience any miracles. A born-again child of God should not say that you are not experiencing miracles because daily we are indeed experiencing miracles after miracles. When God protects you, that is a miracle. When God is sustaining you even at this moment, that is a miracle itself. When God's hand is upon you, and He's blessing you throughout this COVID-19, that is a miracle itself. And God is protecting you and keeping you and guarding you and being your safeguard, that is a miracle itself. And God teaching your heart inside and out, giving you peace every day amidst trials and temptation, that is a miracle itself. And God giving you that sound mind to be able to work, to be able to proclaim the gospel of God's righteousness, to be able to serve His kingdom, that is a miracle itself. And today, faith indeed produces healing. Healing of the mind where we have a sound mind. Healing of us, our hearts, our emotional we have a stable emotion because Christ is in us. And healing does not only limit to spiritual healing, but when we have that fullness of that spiritual healing, it will produce physical healing. Today, we can wake up. That is a miracle itself and a healing itself. Today, we can walk around, eat, and enjoy what God has for us. That is a miracle and a healing itself. Everything in Christ is always good and wonderful for His elect. God will turn everything around for His elect. In Matthew 8 verse 13, it says, As you have believed, so let it be done for you. All of this, all the signs, all the miracles, all the healing that I've said just now can only be made manifest when you have faith and belief that God is for you and He is not against you, because you have believed in His baptism, death, and resurrection, all things have been made perfect for you because Christ is in you. That perfect God is in you, indwelling in you. We've heard about this saying, do not put the cart before the horse, right? So what does it really mean, putting a cart before a horse. Imagine the horse is your faith, faith in the righteousness of God, that bonus of faith. And the cart is all the healings, the miracles, all the works that will be produced out of it. If we put the cart before the horse, which means that we are putting all the healings, all the miracles, all the works before that faith, nothing will move. It won't move forward. We cannot grow and we cannot move forward. But if we put the correct position, which is the horse before the cart, everything will go smoothly and you can reign with Christ. You can reign and run forward. Which means that when we have faith, faith itself will produce Humility, faith itself will produce submission. Faith itself will produce accountability. Faith itself will produce the bonus. Faith itself will produce power and authority to speak forth to in your situation and to speak forth this gospel of God's righteousness. And faith itself will produce healing and miracles that you're looking for. Because Christ himself is a miracle worker 
in you. So faith is that horse. Faith is the one that will bring you forward. That's why in Romans 1, we have seen just now 16 to 17, I'm not ashamed of this gospel truth. And the just shall live by faith and faith alone. That is why faith is the only way back to the kingdom of God. Faith is the only way to enter into the kingdom of God. Only by faith, we can see all that is written in the word of God. We may manifest in our lives today. We can live out that faith. So today I would like to end with this, where you saw that the centurion's servant was healed at that same hour when Jesus said, Go! What you have believed, so let it be done unto you. And that very moment, the servant was healed. So some may say, I want an immediate healing as well. I want an immediate breakthrough as well. Why is Jesus or why is God delaying that for me? We as human beings are living in a limited time and a limited space. But God is not. God knows the best. Last week, we saw the summary of the four Gospels. So here we can see that in the book of Matthew, the frequent word used was, it is fulfilled. And in Mark, the frequent word used was immediately. And in Luke, is writing about everything in orderly record of Christ's life. And in the book of John, the frequent word used was belief. So through these four Gospels, we can see that in your life, it is fulfilled immediately all regarding Christ's life at the point of your belief. This simply means that if you're saying God is a last-minute God or God is a God that is saying it's better late than never God. He is not the last-minute God. He is not that God that will fail you. Because in your life, here it says, in your life, it is fulfilled immediately, immediately, all regarding Christ's life at the point of your belief. So when you have faith, immediately, whatever that is in Christ's life is downloaded into you. That treasure has been downloaded into you immediately. And today, when we believe and by faith, you have that breakthrough at that moment itself. Because Christ is in you. What more do you want? And God will see you through. Because the Holy Spirit resides in you, will never fail you. He will teach you and He will reveal all things regarding the mysteries of God to you. That even at that situation, you can be more than a conqueror. You can be more than an overcomer and you can reign with Christ. So just have faith and believe that Christ has fulfilled all for you and you only need to have faith and believe in the gospel of God's righteousness, Jesus' baptism, death and resurrection. With that, I would like to end my message with this. Just one word. Because one word from God is enough as compared to thousand words from the world. So just one word. Faith.